Before you start watching this, make sure that you watch the PowerPoint that I made. It's only five minutes. In the PowerPoint, I talk about some of the characteristics of surrealistic art that you'll want to include in your final piece. Of course, I'll review them as we go through this lesson, but I would like you to see the weird and yet oddly cool examples of art that are done by some really famous surrealistic artists. The surrealism movement came after World War I, which was from 1914 to 1918, when people were experiencing the confusion and turmoil that's a consequence of war. I think that many of us are experiencing some confusion and maybe even some anxiety about what's going on in our world right now. One of my friends texted me, she's a teacher too, about how surreal this situation is where we're keeping our social distance and teaching from home. After reading her text, I thought, oh, let's do some surrealistic art. Now, you can use any theme or idea that's important and meaningful to you to create your surrealistic piece of art. Think about any recent political or personal events that you would like to express your feelings about. If you're having trouble coming up with a theme, just start looking through magazines and tearing out pages with images or pictures that appeal to you. Something will emerge when you look at the pictures that you have collected. So this is the sample that I made and I will walk you through the process of how to make a surrealistic piece of art. Now, if you watch the PowerPoint, you know that surrealism is very odd and it leaves the viewer questioning what the artist might have been thinking when they were making this. So if you look at mine, I sort of, when I first started making this, I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do, and I did what I suggested that you do, and I just looked through magazines, and I cut things out that appealed to me, and something started to emerge, and I think the theme of mine is sort of like, there's nothing to see here, but you need to open your eyes, and you need to not follow the crowd. You need to think for yourself. Okay, so what you will need for this project is you will need some magazines that you can cut up. You will need a glue stick. You will need some scissors. Um, I'm really lucky and I happen to have some of these little tiny scissors and some big scissors, but whatever scissors you have will work. And sometimes it's kind of nice to have a little bit of tape. I know sometimes when I'm making mine, I rip something by accident and then you can just tape it together and use it. So the way that you start is the first thing you want to think about is just looking through your magazines and choosing things that appeal to you. And when you do that, you'll rip out the whole page. You're not going to just cut right away. So if you're looking through the magazine, you might see something like, oh, that's interesting, but I don't think I, uh, I don't know if I'll use that or not. I'm, I'm going to skip that. Okay, but you know what? I like this picture of this woman. Her face is really happy, so I'm going to tear that page out. And like I said, you just go through magazines and tear pages out that have images that appeal to you, something that you like, something that speaks to you. Okay, so I really like these watches, so I'm going to take those out. And like I said, right now you're not um, cutting the things out, you're just tearing the whole page out, okay? So you just have to keep looking, and so I'm looking through this month's Oprah, that's a good magazine, but you can also look through catalogs. Um, this catalog has a lot of really cool things in it, so like I really like this heart right here, so I think I'll tear that page out. Um, another source for good images would be um, any kind of nature magazine that you might have hanging around, like I have this Audubon. Um, please make sure you ask whoever this magazine belongs to before you start cutting things out of it, because some people like to really save these. Um, I really like this picture, so I'm going to take this out. So that's the process of choosing your images. You want to choose quite a few because you want to have a lot of choices. So once you choose these, and I forgot to tell you another thing you need to look for, you want to have a background. So if you look in mine, you'll see that there's, um, there's the foreground, that's the part that's the closest to you. There's the background, that's the part that's furthest away, and then there's the middle ground. So you want to have these sections because you need to be able to um, put things in places that they might not normally be seen or um, you just want to have that. So when you're looking through your magazines, make sure you take things out that might be a good background. Now if you're lucky, you might find something that already has um, foreground, middle ground, and background, like this picture, which I pulled out immediately because I was like, oh, this is perfect. It has the 
foreground, middle ground, and background, I can definitely use that. But if you don't find something right away, like I didn't when I did this, I used three different images and I put them together to make my um, foreground, middle ground, and background, and that's an option too. So images like this, this has a pretty obvious foreground and a background. You could use something like that and cut it apart. Um, this would work. You might have to cut this part out. Something like this might work. You want to do something that's kind of busy, like a beautiful flower or leaf would not be a good background. So once you've chosen your images and you have a couple of choices for background, it's time to start cutting your images out. Now, when you cut your images out, you want to be pretty careful about how you cut. So let's say, for example, I found this image, so of course I, I cut it out. When you're cutting, you need to be really careful to cut right as close to the image as you can so that when you glue them together, they all um, look like they belong together and you don't see the, um, the, the background from the image that you're cutting. So you just want to be really careful and cut them out as close to the edge as you can. So at this point, you still might not know what your theme is going to be or which images you're going to do. What I like to do is I like to cut out a whole bunch of images. So I cut out some things like this, things that appeal to me. I thought these were sort of cool images. So cut out a whole bunch of images, okay? And what I do is I keep them in, you know, some kind of little lid or something just to make sure that I keep them all together and they're not flying all over the place and dropping on the floor, which happens a lot. Okay, so I'm going to put my images in here and then it's time to start thinking about uh, how you want to arrange your images. So I'm going to use this piece that had this really nice um, foreground, middle ground, and background. And I'm going to be thinking about using the characteristics or the techniques that surrealistic artists use. So if you remember when we were looking at, or when you were looking at the PowerPoint, we talked about a couple of different things. So one of the things we talked about was levitation, which is when things are floating in space that shouldn't be in space. So obviously if I'm levitating or if I'm putting something in and showing levitation, it would need to be up here. So I could do something that shouldn't be in space. So maybe I can put um, a clock up here or something like that. So that would be an example of something levitating. Um, so juxtaposition is putting things near each other that don't make any sense or changing the order of things. Um, so for example, dogs walking people instead of people walking dogs, mixing inside space with outside space. So putting like a tree in the kitchen or a bathtub outside. So, um, this would be an example of, um, juxtaposition. So, um, obviously you wouldn't find a dolphin in the mountains. So maybe I'll put the dolphin up there. So scale was another thing that we talked about, things that are unusually small or unusually large compared to the rest of the scene. So for example, a car that's the size of a mountain or ants that are the size of people. So for scale, I, I think I might use this. So this is actually an example of two things put together. This is transformation also because I took the top of a girl and the bottom of a bird and I put them together. I don't know if you can see that clearly. I'll put it here so you can see that. So this is a place where you might want to use the tape. So I taped them in the back and then trimmed it so it would look like it was one unified piece. So that's kind of two things in one there. So, because she's way bigger than she should be if this was realistic. You can see the girl in the more realistic part of the painting. So another um, example of scale would be this giant pencil that I found, and I'm thinking that I might put that giant pencil in her hand and somehow somehow use that. So transparency is something is, is when you can see through something that's solid. So I had this solid head, and I cut a hole in it to make it transparent, and I can just put it right there, or I can put it somewhere else that I might want to emphasize something. Um, 
So what you're going to do is just sort of play with your pieces and when you have a composition that you like then you can start gluing. So when you're thinking about your composition um, you might want to have or you should probably have a focal point that's where your eyes go to as soon as you look at the piece of art. So on this one that I made my focal point is right here this book that says nothing to see and then that makes you want in my what I want you to do is think about what there's nothing to see but look at all this and oh wait a minute why are their eyes covered so I want the viewer to be looking at that first and then thinking about that as they look at the rest of the art um, another thing you can think about with your composition is whether or not it's balanced and you can balance things symmetrically meaning both sides are going to be the same or asymmetrically you're probably not going to have a symmetrically balanced composition this right now is not balanced you can see that there's a lot more weight over here than there is over here and that's okay I'll add some things over here if I want to okay so there are some tricks that you can do also to make things interesting so I don't actually want these dolphins to um, I'm not going to glue them right here I want them to look like they're coming out so if you want to do that, you can take your, think about where you want the dolphins to emerge from. And then you might want to use a pencil to mark that so that you know where to cut it. So maybe I want the dolphins to be, to look like they're coming out from right here. So I'll put a little mark there and take my scissors and magazine paper is super easy to cut. So you just make a little slit there and you can put the dolphins through and then it looks like there and this is where you sometimes rip stuff so just be careful okay so there my dolphins are coming up through the mountain now okay so um, if you want to show a little depth in your artwork then you might want to layer some things so have fun with this um, the other thing that you can do if you want is you can add some of your own drawings to it. If you wanted, if you are looking for a certain image and you can't find it, you can draw it and you can cut it out and add it to it. Uh, once you're happy with your composition, you can glue your images down and um, you're finished. Friends, I miss you so much. I really hope you enjoy doing this project. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's an expression of your own thoughts and your own ideas and maybe your own anxieties and concerns. So just have fun with it. Um, don't stress yourself out about it. When you're finished with it, you can glue it in your art journal. I'd love, love, love to see it. I know some people have already sent me pictures of things that they've done from the first video that I posted. So if you make something, please send me a picture of it. I really want to know how you guys are doing and what you're doing. So bye guys. Miss you.